Chapter Seven. Illnesses like Armand's have one fortunate thing about them: they either kill outright or are very soon overcome. A fortnight after the events which I have just related, Armand was convalescent, and we had already become great friends. During the whole course of his illness, I had hardly left his side spring was profuse in its flowers its leaves its birds its songs and my friend's window opened gaily upon his garden from which a reviving breath of health seemed to come to him the doctor had allowed him to get up and we often sat talking at the open window at the hour when the sun is at its height from twelve to two i was careful not to refer to marguerite fearing lest the name should awaken sad recollections hidden under the apparent calm of the invalid but armand on the contrary seemed to delight in speaking of her not as formerly with tears in his eyes but with a sweet smile which reassured me as to the state of his mind i had noticed that ever since his last visit to the cemetery and the sight which had brought on so violent a crisis sorrow seemed to have been overcome by sickness and marguerite's death no longer appeared to him under its former aspect a kind of consolation had sprung from the certainty of which he was now fully persuaded and in order to banish the sombre picture which often presented itself to him he returned upon the happy recollections of his liaison with marguerite and seemed resolved to think of nothing else the body was too much weakened by the attack of fever and even by the process of its cure to permit him any violent emotions and the universal joy of spring which wrapped him round carried his thoughts instinctively to images of joy he had always obstinately refused to tell his family of the danger which he had been in and when he was well again his father did not even know that he had been ill one evening we had sat at the window later than usual the weather had been superb and the sun sank to sleep in a twilight dazzling with gold and azure though we were in paris the verdure which surrounded us seemed to shut us off from the world and our conversation was only now and again disturbed by the sound of a passing vehicle it was about this time of year on the evening of a day like this that i first met marguerite said armand to me as if he were listening to his own thoughts rather than to what i was saying i did not answer then turning toward me he said i must tell you the whole story you will make a book out of it and no one will believe it but it will perhaps be interesting to do you will tell me all about it later on my friend i said to him you are not strong enough yet it is a warm evening i have eaten my ration of chicken he said to me smiling i have no fever we have nothing to do i will tell it to you now since you really wish it i will listen this is what he told me and i have scarcely changed a word of the touching story yes armand went on letting his head sink back on the chair yes it was just such an evening as this i had spent the day in the country with one of my friends gaston we returned to paris in the evening and not knowing what to do we went to the variete we went out during one of the entre-acts, and a tall woman passed us in the corridor, to whom my friend bowed. "'Whom are you bowing to?' I asked. "'Marguerite Gautier, he said. "'She seemed much changed, for I did not recognize her,' I said, with an emotion that you will soon understand. "'She has been ill. The poor girl won't last long.' I remember the words as if they had been spoken to me yesterday. I must tell you, my friend, that for two years the sight of this girl had made a strange impression on me whenever I came across her without knowing why i turned pale and my heart beat violently i have a friend who studies the occult sciences and he would call what i experienced the affinity of fluids as for me i only know that i was fated to fall in love with marguerite and that i foresaw it it is certain the fact that she made a very definite impression upon me that many of my friends had noticed it and that they had been much amused when they saw who it was that made this impression upon me the first time i ever saw her was in the palace de la bourre outside sus an open carriage was stationed there and a woman dressed in white got down from it a murmur of admiration greeted her as she entered the shop as for me i was riveted to the spot from the moment she went in till the moment when she came out again i could see her through the shop windows selecting what she had come to buy i might have gone in but i dared not i did not know who she was and i was afraid lest she should guess why i had come in and be offended nevertheless i did not think i should ever see her again she was elegantly dressed she wore a muslin dress with many flounces an indian shawl embroidered at the corners with gold and silk flowers a straw hat a single bracelet and a heavy golden chain such as was just then beginning to be the fashion she returned to her carriage and drove away one of the shopmen stood at the door looking after his elegant customer's carriage i went up to him and asked him what was the lady's name mademoiselle marguerite gautier he replied i dare not ask him for her address and went on my way 
the recollection of this vision for it was really a vision would not leave my mind like so many visions i had seen and i looked everywhere for this royally beautiful woman in white a few days later there was a great performance at the opera comique the first person i saw in one of the boxes was marguerite gautier the young man whom i was with recognized her immediately for he said to me mentioning her name look at that pretty girl at that moment marguerite turned her opera glass in our direction and seeing my friend smiled and beckoned to him to come to her i will go and say how do you do to her he said and will be back in a moment i could not help saying happy man why to go and see that woman are you in love with her no i said flushing for i really did not know what to say but i should very much like to know her come with me i will introduce you ask her if you may really there is no need to be particular with her come what he said troubled me i feared to discover what marguerite was not worthy of the sentiment which i felt for her in a book of alphonse carr entitled m rochen there is a man who one evening follows a very elegant woman with whom he had fallen in love with at first sight on account of her beauty only to kiss her hand he felt that he had the strength to undertake anything the will to conquer anything the courage to achieve anything he scarcely dares glance at the trim ankle which she shows as she holds her dress out of the mud while he is dreaming of all that he would do to possess this woman she stops at the corner of the street and asks if he will come home with her he turns his head crosses the street and goes sadly back to his own house i recalled the story and having longed to suffer for this woman i was afraid that she would accept me too promptly and give me at once what i fain would have purchased by a long waiting for some great sacrifice we men are built like that and it is very fortunate that the imagination lends so much poetry to the senses and that the desires of the body make thus such concession to the dreams of the soul if any one had said to me you shall have this woman to-night and be killed to-morrow i would have accepted if any one had said to me you can be her lover for ten pounds i would have refused i would have cried like a child who sees the castle he has been dreaming about vanish away as he wakens from his sleep all the same i wished to know her it was my only means of making up my mind about her i therefore said to my friend that i insisted on having her permission to be introduced to her and i wandered to and fro in the corridors saying to myself that in a moment's time she was going to see me and that i should not know which way to look i tried sublime childishness of love to string together the words i should say to her a moment after my friend returned she's expecting us he said is she alone i asked with another woman there are no men no come then my friend went toward the door of the theatre this is not the way i said we must go and get some sweets she asked me for some we went into a confectioner's in the passage de l'opera i would have bought the whole shop and i was looking about to see what sweets to choose when my friend asked for a pound of raisin glazes do you know if she likes them she eats no other kind of sweets everybody knows it ah he went on when we had left the shop do you know what kind of woman it is that i am going to introduce you to don't imagine it is a duchess it is simply a kept woman very much kept my dear fellow don't be shy say anything that comes into your head yes yes i stammered and i followed him saying to myself that i should soon cure myself of my passion when i entered the box marguerite was in fits of laughter i would rather that she had been sad my friend introduced me marguerite gave me a little nod and said and my sweets here they are she looked at me as she took them i dropped my eyes and blushed she leaned across to her neighbor and said something in her ear at which both laughed evidently i was the cause of their mirth and my embarrassment increased at that time i had a mistress a very affectionate and sentimental little person whose sentiment and whose melancholy letters amused me greatly i realized the pain i must have given her by what i now experienced and for five minutes i loved her as no woman was ever loved marguerite ate her raisin glaces without taking any more notice of me the friend who had introduced me did not wish to let me remain in so ridiculous a position marguerite he said you must not be surprised if monsieur duval says nothing you overwhelm him to such a degree that he cannot find a word to say i should say on the contrary that he has only come with you because it would have bored you to come here by yourself if that were true i said i should not have begged ernest to ask your permission to introduce me perhaps that was only in order to put off the fatal moment however little one may have known women like marguerite one cannot but know the delight they take in pretending to be witty and in teasing the people whom they meet for the first time 
it is no doubt a return for the humiliations which they often have to submit to on the part of those whom they see every day to answer them properly one requires a certain knack and i had not had the opportunity of acquiring it besides the idea that i had formed of marguerite accentuated the effects of her mockery nothing that dame from her was indifferent to me i rose to my feet saying in an altered voice which i could not entirely control if that is what you think of me madame i have only to ask your pardon for my indiscretion and to take leave of you with the assurance that it will not occur again thereupon i bowed and quitted the box i had scarcely closed the door when i heard a third peal of laughter it would not have been well for anybody who had elbowed me at that moment i returned to my seat the signal for raising the curtain was given ernest came back to his place beside me what a way you behaved he said as he sat down they will think you are mad what did marguerite say after i had gone she laughed and said she had never seen any one so funny but don't look upon it as a lost chance only do not do these women the honour of taking them seriously they do not know what politeness and ceremony are it's as if you were to offer perfumes to dogs they would think it smelled bad and go and roll in the gutter after all what does it matter to me i said affecting to speak in a nonchalant way i shall never see this woman again and if i liked her before meeting her it is quite different now that i know her bah i don't despair of seeing you one day at the back of her box and of bearing that you are ruining yourself for her however you are right she hasn't been well brought up but she would be a charming mistress to have happily the curtain rose and my friend was silent i could not possibly tell you what they were acting all that i remember is that from time to time i raised my eyes to the box i had quitted so abruptly and that the faces of fresh visitors succeeded one another all the time i was far from having given up thinking about marguerite another feeling had taken possession of me it seemed to me that i had her insult and my absurdity to wipe out i said to myself that if i spent every penny i had i would win her and win my right to the place i had abandoned so quickly before the performance was over marguerite and her friend left the box i rose from my seat are you going said ernest yes why at that moment he saw that the box was empty go go he said and good luck or rather better luck i went out i heard the rustle of dresses the sound of voices on the staircase i stood aside and without being seen saw the two women pass me accompanied by two young men at the entrance to the theatre they were met by a footman tell the coach to wait at the door of the cafe anglais said marguerite we will walk there a few minutes afterward i saw marguerite from the street at a window of one of the large rooms of the restaurant pulling the camellias of her bouquet to pieces one by one one of the two men was leaning over her shoulder and whispering in her ear i took up my position at the maison d'or in one of the first floor rooms and did not lose sight of the window for an instant at one in the morning marguerite got into her carriage with her three friends i took a cab and followed them the carriage stopped at number one rue d'antan marguerite got out and went in alone it was no doubt a mere chance but the chance filled me with delight from that time forward i often met marguerite at the theatre or in the champs elysees always there was the same gaiety in her the same emotion in me at last a fortnight passed without my meeting her i met gaston and asked after her poor girl she is very ill he answered what is the matter she's consumptive and the sort of life she leads isn't exactly the thing to cure her she has taken to her bed and she is dying the heart is a strange thing i was almost glad at hearing it every day i went to ask after her without leaving my name or my card i heard that she was convalescent and had gone to bogner's time went by the impression if not the memory faded gradually from my mind i travelled love affairs habits work took the place of other thoughts and when i recalled this adventure i looked upon it as one of those passions which one has when one is very young and laughs at soon afterward for the rest it was no credit to me to have got the better of this recollection for i had completely lost sight of marguerite and as i told you when she passed me in the corridor of the variete i did not recognize her she was veiled it is true but veiled though she might have been two years earlier i should not have needed to see her in order to recognize her i should have known her intuitively all the same my heart began to beat when i knew that it was she and the two years that had passed since i saw her and what had seemed to be the results of that separation vanished in smoke at the mere touch of her dress